I have something very exciting here to show you that I got a couple days ago and I haven't opened it just waiting to do a video and I haven't had time. So what this is, the new Red Rotor RC OSD version 2. So RROSD version 2. Now, I've been running since, for a while now, various OSDs. I've been running on a couple quads the um, Power OSD Pro, but I've had old ones all the way down to version 2 and they've always been great. I, I quite like them. Um, I don't think they're as good as the Red Rotors, but at the time this is what I had and I, I really liked that. I never really had a problem with them. I had one that arrived dead on arrival, but all the ones that I've flown have lasted a long time. Uh, in this Alien, I have one of these, uh, Power SD Pro, and uh, it has 130 flights and I've beat the crap out of it and it's still going strong. My buddy Yanni who flies it hasn't had any problems with them either. However, I do admit that when the Red Rotor one came out, it is, I found it to be better. So that is what this one is. This one is version one, which I'm running on this guy here, this tweaker. And I'm also running it on another alien. And um, I like it, because I think it's a little bit more robust. And I like the pad layout a little bit better. And I also like the firmware. Uh, you know, uh, I just think it's a little bit better than the uh, Power OSD Pro. However, something I dis dislike about both of them, I hate the pad layout. I, I just hate shared pads because there's such a pain to solder. You know, one way I like to build these is I like to align all the wires first, clamp them down, and then just solder them at the same time. But most of the time when we build, we do the ESCs with the motors first, all separate, and then we bring them into the core. And when you have to do them like that, it's just, uh, it's just a pain. I, I hate, I mean, I, I end up with a pretty good solder most of the time, but it never looks that great. It's, so, it's just... I'm, I'm sure you guys have, have used this know and agree that the uh, the shared pads are just a, a problem. Even though this one is a little bit better than the uh, Power OSD Pro having pads at the top and bottom. So, I was very excited when they announced that the version 2 was out with a better pad layout. And that is what we have here. So let's take a look. There it is. I'll show you a close up in a second. But one thing I wanted to point out is like for example, on this build here, which is the last alien that I built, I got fed up. This one was supposed to go in there. And I was having a hard time getting a solder because sometimes I get some help. And I was like, ah, I took it apart and just ran without, just, just telemetry. But you know what? I mean, it's fine, but it's nice having the OSD. I, you know, it, it's just, like today I flew with the telemetry and for some reason I ended up like draining a battery way lower than it should have been. So I, I do like to run an OSD when I can. So let's do a close-up and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Well, I have a feeling that the main motivation for this version 2 was the pad layout. Um, there are probably some more advancements on it, but uh, a lot of things are actually very similar. The only things that I noticed that are different between the old one and the new one, and I might be wrong, is the pad layout, the firmware is a little different, and the fact that this one is supposed to cap at 100, um, apps and this one is 150 and it's of course an answer to all these new motors and everybody just running these super powerful motors that pull over 100 amps um, I don't know how they do it with the batteries that we're running but that's that's the point so um, but everything else I think is very similar so as you can see this one the new one version 2 has a positive and a negative pad on each corner for each motor and that is just gonna make building them so much better so much more fun the layout is gonna be cleaner less wires running under the board so there's less um, 
you know more space to to tuck things under the between the flight controller and the board and the frame. So um, the 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 one thing I noticed is the firmware itself um, has larger numbers and uh, larger digits. I guess some people complained that they couldn't read the ones in the original. Where the Power OS D Pro has big numbers, the new version two of the Red Rotor OS Z seems to have bigger numbers as well. Honestly, for me, it was not a problem. I kind of like the smaller numbers, but I can see some people preferring the easier to read numbers. No big deal to me. I it doesn't sway me either way. Um, one thing I noticed, though, one thing I didn't like, and it's kind of minor, is that um, I don't know if I have it here, but um, the 10 volt filtered output for the VTX, just like the older one it only provides 500 milliamps. Now that's fine for most VTXs, but I have, this is a bag, but I have somewhere around here, a uh, the, the Team Black Sheep um, Unify Pro. The Team Black Sheep Unify Pro, when it's outputting 800 milliwatts, it actually pulls 600 milliamps. So it could fry this. So the alternatives would be to either run the Unify Pro at a lower uh, output, so it pulls less than f uh, 500 uh, milliamps, or you can run it raw where you don't have the filtered um, output. So that's kind of a downside, but most VTXs will be fine with it. And yeah, that's pr that's pretty much it. I um, I I'm looking forward to put putting it in, probably in one of these aliens and trying it out. Uh, just the fact that it's going to be a lot easier to put together and solder together, it's uh, pretty exciting to me. But that's pretty much it. Pad layout, 150 um, amperage cap instead of 100, and different firmware, from what I can tell. I mean, there's some parts here that definitely look different, so there might be a lot of improvements. And overall, the layout of the board looks really, really good, really, really clean. So... Yeah, let's see how it does. I'm definitely expecting it's going to do great. Well, since I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and give you a close-up of the board. That's the top right there. And then the bottom, hopefully I can stay in focus. The bottom is flat, which is good. For building again, and then everything's on the top. 